Okay, I'm gonna insert this at the beginning so that y'all don't. Before we get started, trigger warning. Okay, this book, as well as all of the books in this series, they are considered dark romance novels, which means they have triggering scenarios. If you are easily triggered by rape, if you are easily triggered by child abuse, if you are easily triggered by animal abuse, if you are easily triggered by angst or like, you know what I'm saying? This may not be the series for you. If you're not easily triggered by those things, and you can get past it to see the overall plot, I, I, think, I think you will enjoy it. Okay, that being said, let's go back to where I was before. <laughs> Hello, my little ones. Welcome back. <laughs> Welcome back to another episode of What the Smut Book Reviews. I know, that was so weird, right? Oh, what the Smut Book Reviews. Okay, no, all right. In today's video, and I'm recording this literally like the next day from finishing the book because I've come to the realization and I'm gonna try and make this fast. I came to the realization that if I don't record the review for a book I finished before I start the next book, the info, okay, I'm reading the, set, the next book and the information I'm absorbing is going in here and the information from the last book is leaking out from this one. Like, it, it just like replaces. And I've talked about this in the previous video. Like, my brain is on like auto delete. So I'm out of storage, right? And anytime I intake new information, it just auto deletes old information to make space for the new information. And if I don't get the review down before it auto deletes, That's what I'm trying to do. Although I already screwed myself because I jumped straight into the next book in this series <laughs> because I was chomping at the bit for Damon's book and I just couldn't wait. So long story short, as my mom says 45 times during a three hour conversation, long story short, in today's video, we will be reviewing the next book which is book two in Penelope Douglas's, um, what the fuck is it called? Devil's Night series. And the book is called Hideaway. Yeah, okay. First of all, the entire theme for this series, for these covers, for this series, speaks to me on a spiritual level. It's so dark and gothic and like, if you, you don't, you didn't know me, like right now I'm the ripe old age of almost 37. And, um, when I was in my like late teens, early twenties, talk about emo, talk about goth, dude, I was, uh, it's, a, it's an embarrassment to think of, but at the same time, I'm like super nostalgic. Like the, the music alone, uh, I can just put on like the used or like, I don't know, fucking Good Charlotte. And I'm just like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm 19 again, I'm 20 again. Dude, okay, here we go. So the fact that the, these covers are done in all black and white, except for the, the title, which is in like a blood red color, they're so beautiful to look at. And once I've purchased the entire series, I will be taking a picture for like my bookstagram, which I know a lot of y'all are from my bookstagram. You're watching this, you're from, it's coming. Um, there are, I think, six books in the series. I believe there's like four full length novels and two novellas. I don't know what the two novellas will be about. I don't know if I will buy them. I'm sure I'll like them, but I don't know if I'll buy them. But the four main books for the four main dudes I haven't even read Will's book yet, and I know I'm going to buy it. It's just, I can't, first of all, my OCD will not let me have an incomplete collection, at least of like my the basic bitch four, right? Um, but 
I just need them. I need them all. So in today's, <laughs> can you stay on track? In today's video, we will be reviewing this book. I just finished this yesterday. Um, I'm going to be honest. I did the review for the first book in the series called Corrupt, which you will find literally right before this goes up. Like it's literally the video right before this one. And that's because I'm binging the series because I'm obsessed. I'm fucking obsessed. So, um, I did the review for Corrupt. I really liked Corrupt. Like I enjoyed the book. I love her writing style. She's very good. Like I, I, I really love her writing style. But the like second half of the book, I was already focused on Kai. I needed Kai's book, which luckily turned out to be book two. Um, Kai is the main male character for this book. The main female character is a girl by the name of Banks. Um, her first name is like a uh, Nick Nikova something. It's it's Russian, and they call her few people call her Nick for short, but most people know her by Banks. So that's her last name. Um, so yeah, so this, that, I went into this book with such high expectations and Kai was literally uh, the embodiment of every bad boy turned good boy. Like first he was a good boy who pretended to be bad and then he went to prison and then he got out and he was a bad boy for real and then he met Banks and then he was a good or, or like he re-met Banks because they knew each other before prison and and then he was he's like a good boy again and I'm just like mm, yeah boy like good he's good when it counts and then he's he's bad If you know what I'm saying, okay? So, eight minutes and I haven't even <laughs> focused. Okay, so this book has, and we're gonna do this every video because Amazon fucks with me so bad, y'all. Um, okay. This book that I'm holding has 522 pages. Amazon says it has 542 pages. Lies! Um, this book is free to read like the first two, are free to read with Kindle Unlimited. If you have a Kindle, there's, you have literally no excuse. I mean, I'll accept the, the excuse, the general excuse of, oh, but I already have 10 books checked out and they're all important to me and they're all, no. I, I, depending on the 10 books, put it in the comments section below what you currently have checked out with Kindle Unlimited. And I'll tell you, if any of them can be replaced by these. Because <laughs> um, if they can, you should. <laughs> uh, so free to read with Kindle Unlimited. You can purchase this book for your Kindle for the price of $3.99. Still not bad. Um, because it is with KU, I don't think you can get this for your Nook. If I'm wrong about this, I've said it in many videos, if I'm wrong and nobody's just pointed out to me, please let me know because I don't want to keep embarrassing myself. Uh, this paperback, trade paperback, it's a be it's beautiful paper and it's look how thick it is. That's a chunky boy, $19.30. I'm not gonna lie, it's pricey. I don't know if it's pricey in the realm of paperback, trade paperback costs, um, but uh, it's pricey for me because I'm a cheap ass bitch. Like $15 for the first one, I think was like, it was like $14.99 or something. That, that's fine. I can, and it's weird because it's only $5 difference, but I can live with the $5. Like I can live with $14.99 for a trade paperback. $20? but I had to have it because it's Kai and I had to have it. So, so $19.30 for this fat chode of a paperback right now. Um, if it goes up, I can't be held responsible, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, 
So I'll read you guys the blurb, which again, I copied from thing, but I don't know if it's the same as it is on thing. <laughs> thing. Do you know what I mean? Thing. Um, yeah. So I'll read you guys a blurb and then we'll break it down a little bit because I'm going to try and make this video shorter than an hour because I need to break my pattern. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm going to read it from my paper because there's like different fonts on the, the back cover of the book and I feel like it's going to fuck up my flow because everything fucks up my flow. So let's dive in. Devil's Night is returning. Hiding places, chases, and all the games are back. <gasps> okay. Uh, the first snippet of blurb is from Banks's POV. So keep that in mind. Banks. Buried in the shadows of the city, there's a hotel called the Pope. Ailing, empty, and dark, it sits abandoned and surrounded by a forgotten mystery. But you think it's true, don't you, Kai Mori? The story about the hidden 12th floor? The mystery of the dark guest who never checked in and never checks out? You think I can help you find that secret hideaway and get to him, don't you? You and your friends can try to scare me. You can try to push me. Because even though I struggle to hide everything I feel when you look at me, and have ever since I was a girl, I think maybe what you seek is so much closer than you'll ever realize. I will never betray him. So sit tight. On Devil's Night, the hunt will be coming to you. Okay. The next snippet is Kai from Kai's POV. You have no idea what I seek, little one. You don't know what I had to become to survive three years in prison for a crime I would gladly commit again. No one can know what I've turned into. I want that hotel. I want to find him and I want this over. I want my life back. But the more I'm around you, the more I realize this new me is exactly who I was meant to be. So come on, kid, don't chicken out. My house is on the hill. So many ways in and good luck finding your way out. I've seen your hideaway. Time to see mine. <sighs> okay, okay. Asterix. Hideaway is a romantic suspense suitable for ages 18 plus. While the romance is a standalone, don't do it. The plot is a continuation of events that began in Corrupt, Devil's Night, book number one. It is strongly recommended that you have read Corrupt prior to reading this. Okay, that's the first thing I want to talk about. I appreciate that so fucking much, and I'll tell you why. You have no idea how many times I have read the blurb for a book and it has mentioned absolutely nothing about it being part of a series. And then I will read the book and realize it's like book three in a six part. And my brain just like freaks out. My OCD is like, bitch why didn't you start at the beginning okay well bitch i didn't know like how's this my fault i can't tell you how many times that's happened to me because the author will tend to put at the bottom booper Brew is a standalone contemporary romance novel okay but it's not though it's not though so the fact that you're saying it can be read as a standalone I guess but you're also throwing in there but it shouldn't you should read the first book I appreciate that so much <sighs> I love that thank you Miss Douglas for that okay now let's get into the the two main characters for this book Kai Mori who is half Italian half Japanese his mother is Italian his father is Japanese um, he was brought up the way your typical, um, n not to sound like a redneck, ignorant hick, um, your typical Asian parents, how they have that, like, stigma surrounding them of, like, wanting their kids to overachieve and don't dishonor my family name and all, all this jazz. And again, if I'm offended, I don't mean to offend anyone. If you're, if you're Asian, I'm sorry. I'm not trying to but there's plenty of stereotypes that apply to ignorant Southern white people. And I, this is one of them, ignorant Southern. <laughs> um, 
so his dad is very, um, very stoic, very do not disappoint me, son type, right? His mother is um, loving, but like distantly loving. You know what I mean? Like she's, 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 she's a good parent. She's good. Uh, he grew up in a town called Thunder Bay, along with the other characters. This, this is where the plot is set in Thunder Bay. It's like a seaside town, like a seaside, um, picturesque, upper, upper class, you know, like seaside town on the beach. And, um, he grew up with four, with three other friends, Michael, Chris, who in the beginning of this series was, uh, kind of put out there to be like the, the alpha dog, the front runner, um, which I, th I guess the other three growing up did defer to him for the most part, but even throughout the first book, you could see characteristics of the other three like jumping out and them like individualizing themselves, which I really appreciated. Um, so there's Michael, there is Will, Grayson, I think is his last name. Uh, he is the, I don't want to say like runt of the litter, but he's definitely like the, um, hang, hanger on her type, pity me and you, you know what I'm saying? Like, uh, throughout the end of the first book, it, it kind of, uh, he wasn't a very like character, right? Um, through the second book, he had a much more prominent role and it became apparent that he has like a drug and alcohol abuse problem, which endears him, right? Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm wanting to get to his book as well, but there's Will. Then there is Damon. Damon is the scary one. He's the villain for the most part of the first book well of the okay he's the villain at the end of the first book there's like a twist that happens at the end and you're like damn okay through the second book he is the main villain of the second book he's the freak he's the freaky one like freaky like scary freaky like dun, 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 dun. okay He's a chain smoker. He talks very little and what he does say is taunting and cruel and delicious. And uh, he's way damaged, like emotionally stunted, like so, so fucked up. So those are Kai's three friends. Kai himself, is the uh, big brother figure the most responsible of the four? Um, probably based on the way he was raised with his uh, with his dad, and you know uh, he had a loving household. It was it was a cold standoffish type love, but it was still there. You know what I mean? Um, out of the other ones, he definitely had like the best family life. He was he's like the responsible one. He's the one that's reigning the other three in he's right okay that was pre when they were younger like the before all the stuff happened okay so if you have not read the first book why are you here please don't watch this video <laughs> spoilers go back to the first one and watch that video if you don't mind spoilers and then you could come back and watch this one if you haven't read the series it's whatever do whatever you want so in the first book, it explains what happened prior to present day. Okay. The growing up, they were the stars of the high school basketball team. Every year on what they dubbed Devil, Devil's Night. I was going to say Devil's Night, which immediately made me think of deviled eggs. And I don't know why. Okay, um, every year on what they've dubbed 
Devil's Night, which is the night before Halloween, they would go out and they would raise hell. They would wear masks and they would just run amok, create chaos, right? But because they were the stars of the high school basketball team and they're like the golden children of whatever, they pretty much could get away with anything. Um, one night, on Devil's Night, they go out and they perform their misdeeds. Uh, arson, child's play, right? Um, one of them records himself like having sex with an underage girl. 16, he was 19. So there's like a little trigger, trigger. Um, two of them beat the shit out of a cop, almost beat him to death. But they did that because he was abusing his sister and they found out about it. And they were like, okay. So even though they're, they're marauding around as bad boys, uh, they have some type of moral compass, right? Michael didn't take his mask off during any of these uh, events. He was there, he participated, but they couldn't prove anything because he never took his mask off. The other three did. And in the videos, you could clearly see their faces. The videos got leaked online. Three of the four got arrested and sentenced to about three years of peace in jail. Okay. Um, Kai, obviously automatically brought shame upon his parents. He went to he went to prison. When he got out, they all had devised at this point a way to get back at the person that they thought had leaked the videos, um, which is the main female character from the first book. It turned out not to be her, but you know, that's whatever. Um, in the process of that, they come to the realization that they've been betrayed by one of their own. Damon, the scary one, uh, basically assisted someone else in trying to murder them at the end of the first book. Ever since then, Damon has been on the run. He's hiding. They don't know. Is he abroad? Is he where? So they're trying to move on with their lives. But at the same time, they need to know where he is because they need to deal with him because he's sitting in the shadows, lurking, taunting phone calls from unknown numbers, from burner cells, taunting messages, like text messages. Where, where am I? Right? Okay. We're not finished. Right? Um, so, Kai is that that's basically where Kai is right now. Kai, Michael, and Will are trying to track Damon down. They've hired a private investigator. He can't find him. Uh, they on their own can't find him. They have no idea where he is. Damon's father is um, a Russian immigrant who as a lot of like Russian based mafia romance novels will allude to. Uh, he's a criminal, he's cruel, and um, raised Damon to also be cruel. He like, uh, he like abuses dogs and he's like, it, it's, it's shit. Like he's, he's a piece of shit. And I, I can't wait for him to get his comeuppance. Okay. Um, so Damon naturally being raised in that environment is fucked up, but his dad has a lot of clout and his dad has a lot of money. There is a hotel in the like adjacent city from Thunder Bay, which is called Meridian City. It's like a larger city, like what you would imagine like New York would be to like, I don't know, Long Island or something, whatever. Um, and there's a rumor that there's a hidden floor in the hotel, which is now condemned, by the way. Not condemned like rotting around itself, but condemned as in it's closed down. 
It was, they had originally planned to build a basketball, like a um, auditorium or a stadium or whatever you want to call it, uh, in that area. The city had planned to do that. And in preparation for that, someone had decided to build this huge hotel right there to get the jump on the guests that would want to stay for the games. Okay. The hotel, the family that owned the hotel was said to have inserted like a secret hidden floor in every hotel that they owned. So they would have somewhere to stay when they visited that particular city. They didn't want to be bothered. They had their own entrance, their own elevator, et cetera, et cetera, but it was hidden. And now that the hotel is closed, it has become like a local legend that there's a hidden 12th floor in the Pope, which is the name of the hotel. And that, like, is that, in, is that a thing? Apparently it's also haunted. So there's like a, a legend that surrounds the 12th floor that um, a ballerina, a very ethereal, ghostly looking ballerina has been seen um, dancing around the hotel and no one, they think that she's on the 12th floor, but they can't find her, right? Pr present day. The three guys think that Damon is hiding. They, they figure out he's not abroad. There's been no movement on his credit cards. There's been no movement on his passport. He's still in Meridian City or close by in Thunder Bay. Mm -hmm. Kai comes up with this theory that he's hiding in the Pope on the mysterious 12th floor and they need a way to get inside. Enter Banks. Okay, Banks is the illegitimate daughter of Damon's father and another woman. Banks' mom is like a junkie prostitute type situation and like Banks washes her hands of her pretty early on so we don't see much of her. Damon's father um, does not claim her, wants nothing to do with her, women are weak. Women are good for nothing but sex and bringing me, a, bringing me food and whatever, right? Um, when Banks is really little, her mom comes to Tor uh, Gabriel Torrance, who's Damon's dad, comes to his uh, mansion, fortress, whatever you want to call it, and with the hope of getting money. Hey, this is your daughter, and I'm going to plaster this on the news if you don't give me if you don't give me a payout right so he's he's like in his russian bitch please get the book out of here okay um while that's happening damon sees banks damon is already fucked up mentally even as a kid but he sees banks and then they have like a little interaction and he kind of clings on to her. Like not immediately, but he scrounges up as much money as he can find around the house. And shortly after Gabriel gives them both the boot, the, uh, the mom and Banks, uh, he, Damon shows up at her door and says, basically, I want to buy your daughter. Here's $9,000. And she's like, oh, but my baby. Okay, give me the money. And she basically sells Banks to Damon, who takes her back to the house and installs her in his bedroom as like his personal teddy bear. Like anytime he is in an episode of like rage or dissociation or whatever, um, he has her nearby and she talks him down. She's the only one that can talk him down. Uh, to avoid attention and to avoid her budding sexuality and, and her growth spurts and such as she enters into high school and that kind of thing, she dresses in Damon's old clothes. Baggy, um, she like uses ace bandages to like strap her boobs down so she'll be flat chested. And she wears like hats over her hair. She does anything she can to remain invisible. She doesn't. 
well, one devil's night prior to his incarceration, Kai notices her and wants her. He doesn't know who she is. He doesn't know her connection to Damon. And throughout the majority of the book, she, it appears from Kai's point of view that she and Damon are lovers. But he doesn't understand what's so special about her in terms of why Damon has, like, attached himself to Banks in, as opposed to any other girl that he's ever been with. And how are you living with him in his house? And how are you, like, who are you to him? And she won't give up the information. Um, so now he has basically, uh, he, he goes to him, Michael, and Will go to Gabriel Torrens. And they say, I want to buy the Pope from you. We looked up the deed. You're the legal owner. We want to buy the hotel. Gabriel can see right through it. He's like, okay. Um, we'll enter into negotiations about it. Let's, you know, let's see, let's see what you have to offer. So they take, he, he has like the servants take him over to, a, a, like take a, like a banquet hall or something. Like let's have breakfast, you know, in your creepy Russian criminally way. And they're sitting there and they're waiting for Gabriel's assistant to come in personal assistant to come in to discuss the terms of the contract. Um, while they're in there, they're being served breakfast by a, a servant girl or a servant. Yeah. A ser a servant girl. Um, who's kind of just like a wallflower and is just like, she doesn't say anything. She's puts down stuff. And, she, and then she stands off to the side of the room. Like she's invisible and they're talking amongst themselves about, like in code, but like really shitty code about go, trying to get into the Pope to find Damon. And they're like, what the fuck is taking this assistant so long? You know, what's, what's, what's good? And then come to find out the assistant is the servant girl. It's Banks. So even though Gabriel Torrance has no tolerance for her as his daughter, he sees her, he has seen over the years that she's been living there, her prove her mettle. And basically, um, he low-key wishes that she was a son, that like she had been born a boy because he would have claimed her because he sees her as being far more competent and stable uh, than Damon is, obviously. Uh, so he laments that, oh, you weren't, born, you weren't born a boy and if you were, you would have been the son I never had. And, uh, you, know, you know, but uh, you have a son. Uh, asshole. So they see that, oh shit, this is the assistant and we've been talking shit this whole time. And she's like, oh, I got what I need. And she just like walks out. And then Kai remembers her from before his incarceration where they had their like little exchanges. At first he didn't recognize her. And then he realizes who she is. And... He's like, Ugh, okay, um, now, like, I, I want you as part of the negotiations. Like, you're going to be at my beck and call. You're going to work for me until this deal is closed. Gabriel is a, such, a, such an asshole that he essentially puts as part of the contract, the only way you're going to get the Pope is if you enter into a more binding union with my family. And the only way... The, the best way that we know how to do that is through marriage. So he wants Kai to marry his only niece who lives in London. She's a very pretty girl. It's very beautiful. But Kai wants Banks. And at this point, he doesn't know that that's Gabriel's daughter. He, he gets pissed off at something that Banks does. And in a fit of pique, he agrees to marry the niece in exchange for the Pope and a large inheritance and, or like a large dowry and, um, access to banks 24 hours a day. She does whatever the fuck I tell her to do until the time that we're married. And Gabriel's like, I don't care. Like she's just a, she's just a girl to take her. I don't care. So they go through the book mostly with him 
being torn between wanting her and also being angry that she is something to Damon and trying to use her to get to Damon. And she goes through the majority of the book being torn between wanting Kai and her loyalty to her brother, who's the only person that she's ever had in her life that even appeared to give a shit about her, even though the way he used her was very um, abusive. Like, not abusive, like, beating or anything, because he never, like, really touched her, but, like, just, like, uh, domineering, possessive to the extreme. Uh, so, she, but... Stockholm Syndrome much, like, she loves him. So while this is happening, and they're all, like, falling into a routine together and, and whatever, the deadline of the, he hasn't signed a contract yet, Kai, and uh, he keeps, like, making revisions that need to be readdressed and uh, to delay. He's trying to stall. In the meantime, they want access to the Pope. They get access to the Pope. Gabriel doesn't think that Damon is there, so he just lets him in. They find the 12th floor. They, like, there's like a backstory of something that happened with Damon's mom that I won't tell you because you need to, you need to read it. Um, but they find the 12th floor. Damon has been there, but he's not there now. So now they're back at square one. They don't know where he is. Devil's Night is looming. And this is one year later from the time of the first book. Um, Devil's Night is looming and they know that he's just biding his time because whatever he's going to do is going to be on Devil's Night. Now he sees Banks as a traitor, Damon, and he's now taunting her and she's like going to Kai and being like, please let me find him first. If you find him, let me talk to him first. I will talk him out of whatever it is he's trying to do. And... Yeah. So what's going to happen? <laughs> okay. <laughs> um. <laughs> so yeah. Anyway. That's the general premise of the book. There are, in this book, a lot more twists and turns than uh, in the first book. The plot... Which tends to happen in a lot of um, series. Uh, as the series goes along, the plot thickens, right? That is exactly what happens. The plot does thicken significantly for the second book. And the relationship between Kai and Banks, as well as their individual personality traits, um, which I felt were far more pronounced than... Michael and Rika from the first book made it so that I was I was so in it it was ridiculous and even by before the end of that book like well, close to the end because I did focus on the main couple almost the entire book I could not look away from Kai and Banks but like towards the end of the book I was like oh my god Damon's book is next how is he going to redeem himself? He's literally tried to kill all of them. He's a psychopath. How is he going to, who is he going to get paired with? Like I kind of already knew who he's going to get paired with because it leads to, it, it, it drops little hints. But I was like, oh my God, I can't wait to start Damon's book in order to record with my procrastinating self. Who knows when I'm going to record for Hideaway? I can't wait. How am I going to... Hence why I'm here today. Having just recorded like yesterday or day before yesterday. And I never do that. But I needed... I needed to purge myself of Kai's book. So I could jump into Damon's book. Because I'm so obsessed. I'm so... At this point... I'm so obsessed with this series that it's bordering on like creepy. I'm <laughs> Penelope Douglas has a thing on Instagram where she doesn't allow people to tag her in posts or stories, which 
in her, it may be a good thing because if, if she knew, if she, if, it, if she allowed people to tag her, I'm flooding your inbox, bitch. Like at, at this point. So that is the basic premise of the book. What's going to happen at the end when they finally get to all confront Damon? What, what is the mystery of the, the ballerina who dances around the Pope? What, you know, what's going to happen with Banks and Kai? What, 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 what's going to happen? So yeah, for the rating for this book, I gave it a nine and a half. I fucking loved it. And you know, I don't give any, like anything a 10, nine and a half, at least. So yeah, would I recommend this book to anyone? Anyone who'll listen, everyone who'll listen, yes. This book in particular, uh, would I recommend the series to anyone? Yes. Even though the, the first book was very good, I felt like maybe it started like a little bit slow for me. Um, it overall was a good read, which is why I gave it a good rating. And as the series goes on, it's just getting better and better and better. I'm like, I don't want to throw any shade against Michael and Rika. But Kai and Damon, those two in particular, oh, boy, y'all bad. Um, so yeah, so yes, I would recommend the series to anyone that will listen. I, I would recommend that you read this book. I would recommend that you pick up this series, even if you think, you, you may read the first book and you may be like, oh my God, that was amazing. And I'm fine with that. I'm good the good is subjective in my opinion what what i am not raving over you may be like oh my god okay you may read this one and you may be like oh it was good it was really good it was you know i like the first one better that's fine everyone's entitled to their own opinion okay um we, there's no book bashing on this channel like no no real book bashing like me, me, a little shade thrown here and there. no real book bashing um so yeah uh, I, I, I think that's it. 44 minutes. And like the first eight, 10 minutes of that was just nonsense. Uh, um, so yeah, I think that's it. I'm done. Uh, if you enjoyed this video, if you like me and you like my channel, please consider subscribing. I would really appreciate it. If you do subscribe, make sure you hit the bell so you get notifications when I upload a new video. I upload at least once a week. Um, if you would like, you can follow me on social media. I do have a members only Facebook group an Instagram that I'm super active on and a Twitter that I have completely abandoned. Um, feel free to follow me wherever it's up to you. Um, I will link them all in the description box below and I'll put a little banner on the screen for you guys to see. And yeah, I think that's it. I really appreciate you guys joining me for another episode and I really hope that you pick up this book and this series. And yeah, that's it. I love you guys so much, and I'll see you in my next one. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Oh! <laughs> I scared the shit out of Freckles. I'm sorry. Okay. Oh, my God. Okay. This, I can, I feel like, because I, I know I need to do this book justice and I know I'm not gonna, so I'm like freaking out. Okay. Okay. This is going to go in the bloopers. I gotta get my. Okay. <laughs> Stop. Okay, you're spitting on yourself. Here we go. Let's get this show on the road, this shit show on the road. It sits abandoned and surrounded by a forgotten surrounding. What? Surrounded. I think maybe you see, mm, nope. Oh my God, my cup's leaking everywhere. <sighs> you know I'm gonna do it. <laughs> okay. There. 
and I'll do the other thing too. Ready? So satisfying. So satisfying. So satisfying. Oh, it's hot in here and I can't breathe. I get so worked up. I get so, when it's a book that I really enjoyed, I get so hype that like my head starts hurting. I think I shoot my blood pressure up. I'm hot. I'm sweating. Anyway. <laughs> my posture is trash. Okay. There may be some blooper. I don't know. Because I, I feel like I, I did decently on this. Even though I was all over the place, I feel like I did pretty. I did okay. I did okay on this one. My Punk 57 review was absolute garbage. I seriously considered re-recording because of how scatterbrained and like harem scarum I was. And I just like, but then I thought about having to like put on my makeup again and do my hair again. And I was just like, no, I can't. <laughs> nah, <laughs> can't do it, too lazy. So it, you get what you get, I guess. Uh, some are good. And some are not good. Some are so-so. Some are more so. Potato, padilda. Um, okay. I love you guys, and I'll see you in my next, in my next video.